Hey everyone, welcome back to the Drum Sample Shop YouTube channel. Um, today we've got something a bit different. We are going to be looking at the brand new reverb plugin from Universal Audio, the Hitsville Reverb. Now, I've not heard this reverb plugin yet. I'm going in blind, which is going to be fun. Um, but a bit of backstory on this plugin it is an emulation of the reverb echo chambers in the attic loft of Hitsville Studios in the US, which, if you don't know, are responsible for a heck of a lot of old Motown records. Um, so that's really exciting because we get the sound of an iconic studio's reverb chambers just inside our computer, which is fantastic. So let's get into it. Okay, so I thought it'd be really fun to check out this plugin um, for the first time round in its natural habitat, really. So I've thrown together a Motown style track um, for the sake of this video, bit of fun. Here's how the track sounds. So that's the vibe. Um, I've even gone with a bit of retro panning as well. You'll be able to hear the drums very much on your left-hand side. And then we've got the Rhodes piano on the right-hand side, and then bass, vocals, and electric guitar panned centrally. Okay, I also thought it'd be pretty fun to treat the reverbs like they would have been treated back in the 60s and 70s on these Motown records. Um, so what I've done is, I, is I've duplicated all of our instrument tracks and the vocal um, and I'm going to put the reverb plugin on those duplicates and treat them like a, just a reverb send basically so I'll turn the mix on the plugin all the way up um, and then I can blend them with the dry tracks um, I thought that'd be kind of fun okay let's get into it so I'm going to start with the drums I'm going to solo the drums and I've got this drum verb uh, channel down here this is genuinely my first time <laughs> <laughs> listening to this reverb. I've heard bits about it. I've seen the interface of the actual plugin um, briefly, but I haven't I haven't heard it. So here we go. It looks great. I think that's a fair I think that's a fair point. It looks amazing. They've done a great job. Um, we've got chamber one and chamber two. So there was two um, attic revo chambers at Hitsville. There is. Um, and the great thing is that is that they've included both of them. So Straight away, straight off the bat, Universal Audio, thank you so much. These little these little notes that come up underneath the chambers is really handy. That's great. Use chamber one, use on vocals, solos, percussion to push the most important elements up front. That's a great thing to know that that's that that's how they use them. And chamber two used on strings, horns, pianos, and drums for beautifully enhanced width and depth. That's fantastic already. That's a great, that's great tips. Just come straight out of out of the plugin. That's awesome. Okay, so we're gonna start on drums. So I'm gonna start on chamber two. Why not? I'll take their advice. Let's give it a go. Okay, that's a long decay. Pull the decay back a bit. There we go. That's better. And also, I think I might try and... Back in the day, they would have used these reverbs. Most likely, they would have been mono, basically. So I'm going to make... I've got a mono switch here next to the width control, so I think I might flick that and make it mono. There we go. This pre-delay control will be the distance between the drum hit and then when that reverb will sound so if you add the more pre-delay you add the more distance there is between the actual hit and then the reverb of that hit so it sort of separates the dry drums a little bit more from the reverb drums no pre-delay would mean that the the reverb happens at the exact same time um, as the hits that it's affecting hear that separation there. I haven't 
even touch the speakers, microphones, or the distance that the microphones are from the speakers. I have to say, Universal Audio, the amount of detail that's been put into this emulation plugin is fantastic. It genuinely is brilliant. Okay, let's play with the microphone just. closer those microphones are to the speakers, definitely the more kind of attack you get. And maybe it feels slightly more up front, the reverb. Kind of feels like it's a little bit more in front of your face. Whereas the, as you pull them away, they get a little more washy maybe, a little more undefined, which is kind of nice. It also feels like it's affecting the pre-delay as well. Like the dis the microphone distance might be affecting the way that the pre-delay works, almost as if it's like a your the dis the microphone distance working like a fine tune. I don't know. So we've also got the speakers and the microphones, which I haven't even looked at yet. So the microphones and the speakers, we've got one full, full range, high fidelity sound, comprising of a 15 inch woofer, integrated high frequency. Okay, and then. These little speakers, they're, they're a lot smaller. Home stereo speakers, okay, great. Maybe a little more, more focused. That's a definite change in tone. Microphones make a really nice difference as well. This classic Shaw 545, it's like the pre the predecessor to the SM57 is a fantastic mic still. I know, I mean, I've used it a good number of times on snare drums and stuff like that. It's a great microphone, classic mic. Okay, so I think I'm landing on these settings for the drums. So as a run through, we've got chamber two as per their advice. And then I'm going for the first set of speakers, which is this 15 inch woofer, um, rather than the slightly smaller home stereo speakers. I feel like this gives a slightly nicer rounded tone, maybe just specifically for this scenario. Um, I think the speakers that are pumping the track into the into the room are going to depend on maybe the tone of instrument that you're dealing with, you know, every drum and guitar and whatever will sound different. Um, so for me today, I feel like this is the right option. The, the microphones are a little a little right of, of the center position, um, a little further towards, um, if a little further away from the speakers, felt like it gave a nice sort of slightly a washier feel, um, rather than feeling a little more upfront and focused um, and in your face. I wanted them to feel a little further back. And then the microphone I've gone with is is the 44. Um, these microphones, the options that you have, you've got the, the 545, which is the sure predecessor to the SM57. The 44 is based on the old RCA ribbons. Um, and then the 631 is based on the Electra Voice omnidirectional microphones. And then the KM86 is this condenser, a Neumann, a Neumann condenser. So there's a, there's a lot of tones that you can get out of this um, just from the microphones, let alone the distance they are, and then the speakers and whatever, and the chamber. All of these factors taking into consideration means that actually the amount of reverb tones that you can get from this plugin is actually enormous. The combinations of everything is, is going to be almost endless. Um, but for the drums today, I'm going to go with the 44. Also another point which I forgot to say, which is all these drums in this Motan jam that I've thrown together um, are actually just drum sample shop loops. So these drums are 
from the Indiana Tones pack. And they are from, there's some loops which I've chopped up to make feel a little more Motown um, from the International uh, Loops pack. And I've also added a Dark Crash um, from the Ribbon Mic folder um, from the King Gong pack. Okay, so I'm going to move on to see uh, what I can do with the vocal. Um, I'm going to go with Chamber 1 with the vocal as per their advice. I'm just going to stick with it. So, and also in, in Chamber 1, we have slightly different speakers. So the first one, it says the 800 8 inch mid range speaker pointed directly in the corners of the room. Okay, so that's a different setup to chamber two where the speakers are actually facing in the room. Uh, and the microphones, I believe, are facing away. Yeah, so chamber two, the microphones face into the room, and so do the speakers. And then actually chamber one, the speakers face into the corners of the room and the microphones are also faced at the rear of the speakers into the corner of the room, which is interesting. And then the second speaker is, this says, the instructable and very narrow band four corn drivers replaced the 800s in 1968. Okay, so these are two different speakers that they've used at different times um, in the studio's history, which is great. Okay, let's see what we can do then. No. Okay, so the vocals, I think I'm landing on these settings. So obviously we're in chamber one. Um, I've gone with this first speaker, which is the slightly smaller speaker, not the four corn one. And then actually I've not gone fully mono this time. Maybe this is more of a modern pop production that's um, coming through me. Um, but instead of going fully mono, what I've done is I've actually pulled the width back a bit, sort of 60 65-70% um, to keep it sort of focused, but it's not totally mono. I've pushed the decay a little bit further because the drum groove has such a constant snare drum. Um, you haven't got much time between hits um, to kind of hear that reverb. One, be audible, but also not get too lost in everything. Whereas the vocal is a little bit more washy and soaring over the top, so I've actually pulled the decay up a little, and we can hear a little bit more of those reverb trails, which is really nice. And then I've actually pulled the microphones at their maximum distance. Um, I think gets the most out of that room in terms of its size. And then I've gone with the KM86, the old Neumann-style condenser microphone. I think the condenser felt right here because... I wanted to fill quite a, a much wider range, full range um, frequency spectrum for the vocal reverb and the condenser microphone will give that to me. So it feels great. Just to note, I have actually also added some mild reverb to all the other instruments to sort of glue them all together in, in to feel like they're in the sort of similar space. Okay, I feel like I've got a nice balance. Suddenly, with the power that Universal Audio have given us, um, We've managed to take this little humble Motown vibe jam and make it feel like it's been recorded at Hitsville. <laughs> the reverbs really put it in a space that sounds like those classic records. I mean, inevitably, because it is the sound of those classic records. The space around the notes that was on those classic Motown records is right now at your fingertips, thanks to Universal Audio. Let's give this a little listen and see what it's done. I might even turn the reverbs off and on. I'll start with the reverbs off. Reverbs in, here we go.
That is a brilliant plugin. Um, I mean, that was a quick mix for me, but I feel like, I mean, the longer you would spend with this plugin, probably the more gold dust you would find. This plugin has made it sound like all of these instruments and that vocal were all played in the same room, in the same space, you know, almost like in the live room on the floor. I mean, spoiler alert, they didn't. But this plugin has just got such power. Um, that is awesome. I'm, I'm. <laughs> that was genuinely my first time using that plugin, and I genuinely think that is a fantastic plugin. Yes, I used it with a Motown Jam track, um, and kind of went a little old school on the production with it, with the panning and stuff. But this plugin is going to have so many uses. You could use this. Um, I mean, I'm going back to the video that we did about creating drum tracks with only drum samples. Part of that process was making the drum samples sound like they were in one room together. This plugin will do that so well. If you made a drum track using only samples, there was no real drums, there was no real drummer, no live room. Now this, this, this plugin will give you that live room, it will give you the space around the hits and the notes that will make it feel like it's in a real space, you know, a, a real drum, a real live room, a real studio. And also if you're really into the new stuff coming out from Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack um, with their Silt Sonic project, as I am. This stuff is really applicable. These, this reverb plugin will do such a good job to recreate all those old Motown vibes um, as they are uh, at the moment with, with the Silt Sonic album, um, which sounds amazing. So um, that's just another, another idea in terms of use if you're wanting to go down that route. It's going to have so many uses. Um, what a great echo chamber what a great room sound that that produces um thank you universal audio for such a brilliant plugin so i'm actually going to keep playing around with it um but that's all for now really hope that helps if you're thinking about maybe buying the new universal audio hitsville reverb chambers plugin if you're not yet subscribed to this channel then please consider subscribing um, if you do make sure you hit the bell icon so you get notifications and you never miss us when we put out a new video but otherwise we'll see you in the next video